I think, you know, one of the, the scariest things uh, when you're a resident, especially a junior resident taking care of patients uh, that come through the ER is being tasked with figuring out if someone has an injury, if they have a fracture, is it an unstable fracture? Does it need surgery? Do I need to talk, call my attending or can it wait till the morning? Those kind of things. So this chart just basically uh, tells you sort of my personal experience with the surgical management of spinal cord injury. And you can see that there's sort of peaks and valleys uh, to the levels for which people get spinal cord injuries. And, and the most common areas uh, to see injuries are in the mid-cervical spine and at the thoracolumbar junction. And that just has a, a bit to do where uh, people are susceptible to fracture dislocations in these areas. And we're not going to go into the details of fractured dislocations. That's a, a really another talk, but uh, just to, to be cognizant about that. In terms of incidents, it's about 10,000 cases per year in the U.S., actually slightly going down over time, fortunately, because of preventative uh, measures and educational measures. We see, if for, for example, in Florida, much less diving accidents than we did before. Um, the prevalence, obviously, is the uh, incidence times the years that these people survive. And as survival has increased, the prevalence has increased. And it's an incredibly costly disease, uh, not only to manage initially, but also to um, uh, take care of the patients uh, after, after their injury. And the cost is proportional to their level of injury. So obviously someone who's para is much more, uh, much less costly than someone who's quadriplegic, which is much less costly than someone who is quadriplegic and on a ventilator. In terms of um, mechanisms of injuries, uh, most common motor vehicle accident, um, and these statistics are a little bit old, the, the motor vehicle accident as an etiology is declining. And that has to do with the fact that cars are much safer with airbags and, and seat belts. And we're seeing, uh, still see lots of assaults, uh, guns and knives, but we also seeing more and more falls as cause for spinal cord injury, and particularly in el elderly with preexisting stenosis. Uh, a, a relatively uh, light injury can result in a significant uh, injury to the cord because of the pre-existing stenosis. We're actually going to talk a little bit about that specifically. When you look at the pathophysiology of acute spinal cord injury, there are primary injury mechanisms and secondary injury mechanisms. Primary injury mechanism is what happens at the time of the injury, and secondary injury mechanisms are the biochemical uh, events that occur subsequently that can result in further injury and neurological deterioration. So the primary injury mechanism, acute compression, if like, for example, a fracture dislocation, all the way to sheer missile injury for a penetrating uh, trauma. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.